Oh, hello, good day to everyone. Welcome to my first video presentation entitled Multi-Dwelling Unit Residential Load Calculation based on the Philippine Electrical Code 2017 article on table references and interpretation. Okay, ako nga pala si Engineer June. I'm a senior project uh, site engineer and designer of an engineering company here in Manila. And uh, without further ado, let me start with uh, uh, my video presentation calculation methods of these multiple dwelling units. Okay, meron po tayong data input ng uh, atin uh, dwelling units. Okay, we have 10 condo units here to be constructed in an area of 100 meters square each. And will be fully furnished with all the amenities and appliances to be supplied with single phase power supply. 9 to 9 to 30, 3 wire system plus the G's, of course. Okay, we have here the load schedule for each uh, condo unit. And let's go to the next one the calculation of the three main uh, load. Okay, you have the general lights and receptacles. Before we go over there, let's let's uh, go over to this uh, PEC article first. Uh, the PEC 2017 article 2.20.2.3. Okay. As you can see here. Okay, in this article, we have here the dwelling unit, uh, the types of occupancy, and we have the 24 VA over meters squared for the unit load. Let's go back to the main. So, we have a 24 VA, this is dwelling unit based on this article, times 10, times 100 meters squared is equals to 24 kbr. We do the area method here, calculation. That's the reason why we have this 24 kb. Then we go to the appliance brand circuit, the PEC article 2.20.3.13. Let's go over with this one. <coughs> okay, let me read this one. The small appliance and laundry loads, dwelling unit. The small appliances, okay, I will just have to go and stress this uh, uh, point here where the load is subdivided through two or more feeders the calculated load for each shall include not less than 1500 volt amperes for each two wire branch appliance branch circuit okay what does this mean let me have the uh, picture of this uh, small appliance load okay we have in the kitchen area we have these uh, small appliances with the, which include the waffle irons the toaster pizza the rice cookers the crock pots coffee pots blenders etc etc and the clothes iron these appliances need their own circuits due to the large amount of power they consume this is correct true this is true and so what happened here is that uh, okay this is the kitchen appliance we have here in the kitchen okay uh, more we, the, the the code says that we have to have this uh, minimum of 220 amps circuit breaker preferably preferably a gfci circuit breaker dedicated uh, circuit breaker in this uh, particular uh, setup of the kitchen appliances Kasi marami po silang kitchen appliances rito. In the U.S., when I went to the U.S., I saw some, uh, uh, most of their houses, they have uh, three GFCI receptacle dedicated for each or for the uh, appliances because they consume a lot of uh, power in these uh, kitchen appliances. So uh, the minimum is 220 arms circuit, brand circuit dedicated load for this appliance circuit okay now let's go to the laundry brand circuit okay the laundry brand circuit is uh, we only have one here and the this uh, article here let's take a look at this article the laundry 
So for the lone D, we need to have at least not less than 1,500 volt ampere shall be included for the each wire to our laundry brand circuit. So we need only one two wire laundry brand circuit in this particular uh, scenario. Let's take a look at this uh, laundry layout here. If you can see the laundry layout here, okay, we have here one brand circuit, a 120 amp laundry circuits. Okay, we have a receptacle, we have a GFCI here, and uh, all this and the washer here, which will be included in this particular brand circuit here. Uh, according to the code, uh, you do not uh, uh, connect any lights circuit in this particular brand circuit to the laundry. Okay, this is not allowed. Now, let's go to the total load. Oh, one, two, and three. Okay, the total load we have here is okay. Uh, total load of uh, uh, which twenty four plus thirty kVA plus fifteen k kVA, which is equal to sixty nine kVA. Based on this particular code, article two point two twenty point three point three. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, 2.2.3. Uh, this is actually the rule of thumb for the 120 kVA and the percentage demand factor. Okay, we have here the demand factor, the types of the capacity we have here is dwelling units. The first 300 or less at the 100% demand factor here. Now for the 3,001 to 120,000. <laughs> Uh, apply this 35% uh, demand factor here and the remainder over 120,000 uh, you have to apply this 25% uh, demand factor that is uh, this what is this code uh, interprets now let's go to the option one because we have two options to consider this particular code uh, the option one is if the total load is less than 120 kvf you can only apply the 35% demand factor here. So let's go over with the calculation. You set aside the 3 kVA at 100% demand factor here. And now we go to the next one, 69 kVA minus 3 kVA times 35%, which is uh, equal to 23.1 kVA. The sum of these two will be the total apply load of 26.1 kVA. Okay, in this uh, particular uh, option one this will be applied to our dwelling units uh, calculation because the 69 kVA is uh, less than the uh, the 120 kVA uh, based on this uh, code now we have uh, an option to here to discuss with okay let me see go over with the option two okay <coughs> Okay, the option to here, if the total demand load is greater than 120 kVA, example, let's just take an example of 200 kVA. Uh, if this is the case, uh, both the 35% and the 25% demand factors are to be applied here. So, well, let's go over to the uh, calculation of this one. Let's set aside the 3 kVA here at 100% demand factor, okay? Now we go to the next one, 120 kVA minus 3 kVA times 35% equals to 40.9 kVA. Then we go to the next, the 200 kVA minus 120 kVA times 25%, which is equal to 20 kVA. The total applied load here is 63.9 kVA. Maybe in our, in our future designs of uh, these uh, dwelling units, uh, we can uh, have a total of more than 120k, so we can apply this one. But for now, we can only apply the <coughs> option number one because uh, it is uh, lesser, the total load we have is lesser than 120k. Okay, now let's go to the demand factor here. Okay, the demand factor. For the range demand factor here, we have here the 28 kVA. Where did we <coughs> get this 34%? Let's go to this PC, PC table 2.20.3.16. This is the range. 
Okay, we have a 10 number of appliances for ranges here, and we go over here. We have a 34% under this column B uh, to 8.25 kilowatt rating. Okay, that is uh, where we get this uh, value, and we have this uh, uh, calculated load of 28 kVA for the range demand factor. Okay, for the electric clothes dryer, we go to this. Uh, where did, where did, uh, we get this uh, 50 percent. This is from this table here. Let's take a look at uh, this table for the dryer. Okay, this is the number of dryers here. We have 10 for the 10 condo units, and we have 50 percent demand factor for this uh, 10 unit uh, dryers. So let's go back to our <coughs> main. Okay, you have there the table and the calculated value 6.5 times 10 times 60 percent which is uh, 32.5 kba okay take a note take a, let's take a, a look at this uh, note here most of our appliances here are recessive loads meaning uh, the power factor is equal to one thus uh, by the rule of thumb the, uh, if the power factor is one one kilowatt is equals to one kva which take note of that Okay, you have the air conditioning unit. This is the article uh, 440. You just have to read this one. Uh, we are only getting the uh, FLA and the nameplate motor of uh, the air conditioning. So we have that. We have uh, for the TTR, we have the 17 amp FLA. This is actually a standard for the three. TR HCU where I used to have this in my design calculation every time I, I make a I make a design plan for the electrical for the uh, air conditioning unit so you just have to multiply the FLA times 230 times 10 units of condo we have this 39.1 kVA let's go to the fasten in place Actually, this fasten in place appliances, ito yung mga appliances na hindi mo na kailangan pang uh, maya maya ay tatanggalin ang kanyang uh, sasaksakan ng kanyang uh, uh, cable. Like the dishwasher, the water heater, nandun sa water heater shower mo sa, sa CR. Ito yung mga water dispenser which uh, most of these uh, like uh, the, uh, the refrigerator. <coughs> where most of these are running uh, in 24 hours continuous 24 hours at uh, kung okay. hindi mo siya running nandiyan lang siya hindi mo na kailangan pang tanggalin pag ikaw matapos maligo so yan yung tinatawag na fast in place so we have a total here of 70.5 kBA where did we get this 75% here let me see this one was taken from this uh, PEC article 2.5 20.3.30 let's let's go over with this uh, PS article okay we have this article fastened in place okay according to this uh, code it shall be permissible to apply the amount of factor of 75% to the name plate rating load of four or more appliances fastened in place other than the electric range etc etc let's go back to the main presentation okay we have the 75 percent here so it's the code uh, tells us that uh, we have a minimum a minimum of four person in place will uh, this uh, 75 percent will be applicable <coughs> the standard applicable demand factors for this uh, fashion in place so we have a four here not including the washing machine because the washing <coughs> machine is already reflected in the laundry brands so you have a 52.8 kVA. Now let's go over to the motors. Now the motors, so we have only one uh, induction motor here, the pump motor for the lone swimming pool with an FL say of 40 amps. We don't have the nameplate uh, TDS of this uh, uh, HP 7.0 HP motor. So we go to the table and this table will be a table 4.30.14.2 let's go to this table here okay the table here is like this one 
And this is the full load current in ampere, single phase alternating current because our 7.5 is a single phase motor, okay, induction motor. So we have a 7.5 here horsepower, and we have here the amps, 40 amps, and we have is a 230 volts. So we'll take the 40 amps. I will save the motor. Okay, now we have this one times 40 times 230. We have a 9.5 kBa for the motors. Okay, the grand total here. Okay, this is the grand total kVA for all a 187.7 kVA. Now let's go over to the sizing of the main feeder and the OCPD. Okay, from this uh, table here. 3.10, 2.6, B16, 75 degrees column. You can size this uh, main feeder here. But uh, for the meantime, well, let's uh, calculate first the uh, full load uh, current of the system. By using this uh, 175 grand total KVA divided by 230 volts is equals to 816 ohms. You see the 816 ohms is over 800 ohms. So we have a rule to follow on this uh, overrated uh, 800 amps based on this uh, PEC table 2.40.14C. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, devices overrated 800 amps where the overcurrent device is rated over 10. The opacity of the conductor should protect shall be equal to greater than the rating of the overcurrent device defined. So that means to say, okay, let's take uh, how much is the size of the main OCPD based on the 816 that we have calculated here. We go to this table here, 240.16. Table 2.16, okay. This is a table. The standard number ratings for the OCPD fuse and fixed circuit breaker so if we have 816 uh, calculated arms we uh, by sizing the OCPD we have to go to the next higher level and the next higher value a standard of which is uh, 1000 amperes okay that is the main size of our main panel OCPD 1000 based on this 240.16 Okay, let's go over to our sizing of the conductors. The conductors, according to the code, you have to match the OCPD to that uh, grounded conductors. Amperes. Okay, since we have the OCPD 1000, let's the our the uh, sizing of uh, the uh, amperes here is also 1000 so we divide it by 3 we're using the paralleling method methodology <coughs> of the conductors we have a 3 333.3 amperes so based on this in this uh, PC code 310.2.6 v16.75 degrees so by the way, why do we have to use the 75 degrees? Because the amperes here, the calculated amperes, is trended over is over 100 ohms. So we have to uh, base this on the 75 degrees column of this particular table here. If uh, our calculated amps is less than 100 ohms, then we have to use the 60 degrees <coughs> column here. Now let's go over with this uh, particular uh, PEC article. Okay, you have there the PEC article. Take a look at this. Oh no. Okay, in this uh, 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 PEC code, we have here this column 75 degrees C. And we have there the 375, and we have there the equivalent size of wire 250 mm squared. I hope you have your PC table with you so you can uh, just uh, take a look on this one. 
So it's uh, let's go back to that presentation. <coughs> okay, that is your 250 mm squared. Uh, in the 250 mm squared war, <coughs> there is yung uh, rated uh, current na pwede niyang i-carry base on this table, which is the 275 amperes. Your insulate the insulation of this 250 wire can carry a a, a, a heat of uh, or an ampere of about 375 degrees which is uh, safe kasi 333.3 amps lang ito so safe ang ating insulation wire dito based on this uh, particular table here so let's go to the GEC of the wire where, uh, let's uh, see this two PC 2.50.317 how did we get this uh, PC Okay, the GEC of the wire here, we over 175 through 600 mm squared. We are uh, between in between this uh, being uh, calculated the wire is uh, 250 mm squared. So this is where we are here, and this is the copper uh, grounding electrode that we are going to apply in this uh, service entrance. The 50 mm squared here, copper. <coughs> okay, now the final one is the service entrance wiring layout. Let me show you what is the final layout of this uh, service entrance. Well, this is the layout for the service uh, three sets of 250M DHSN plus 50M and then score GEC. Okay, uh, sorry for this. Uh, I made a mistake here erroneous error this is supposed to be 50 mm squared okay that's the one so I'm done with my video presentation for the multi joining years load calculations so I hope that you have learned a lot and uh, enjoyed watching my video presentations calculation procedures uh, in my I hope to uh, uh, see you and hear from you in my next uh, video presentations which will be uh, the short circuit uh, calculation uh, for the low voltage uh, residential unit single phase uh, which I'm going to use the point to point method so I hope that uh, you will uh, still be with me in my next video presentation and uh, uh, I hoping, yes, I'm hoping that uh, you will share and uh, subscribe to my channels. Thank you very much. Good day.